With the monarch at the head as defender of the faith, the Church of England has been England's state religion since the 16th century. Bishops in the House of Lords put the church in Parliament too. But some recent legal decisions apparently see the triumph of secular values. Christian hoteliers forced to accept gay guests, airline staff banned from wearing the crucifix at work, through to the ruling last week that prayers cannot be a formal part of council meetings. Today, Prompting to this tonight from Baroness Varsi. My theory is that we are so afraid, and rightly so, of going backwards in history to the bad days when religion was imposed on people by despotic regimes, that we have got to the stage where aggressive secularism is being imposed by stealth. Politicians, Tony Blair included, are often reluctant to do God while in office, though Mr Blair did convert to Catholicism on leaving his post. David Cameron, however, has expressed views which chime with Baroness Varsis. It's actually easier for people to believe and practice other faiths when Britain has confidence in its Christian identity. But rather than militant secularism, the real danger to Christian Britain may well be apathy. Three quarters of UK Christians believe religion should not influence public policy, while almost half believe there should be no official state religion. So, if it takes the chairman of the Conservative Party to turn the tide of secularism beyond pomp and nostalgia, is Christianity in Britain really in deep trouble? Well, with me now are Professor Richard Dawkins, Church of England Bishop Michael Nazir Ali, and the Times Religious Affairs Corresp uh, Editor, rather, Ruth Gledhill. Um, do you think that uh, Saida Varsi does have a point when she talks about these deeply intolerant militant secularists and she possibly means people like you who are marginalising, sidelining religion in this country? I think militant secularist is a bit of an oxymoron, really. Um, militant atheist, you could possibly say. I think I would admit to being a militant atheist. Um, but secularists include religious people. Many secularists are religious. Many of the great secularists of history have been religious. All they wanted to do was to keep religion out of politics, to have religion something that people are free to practice in their own way, but not to have it part of government, not to impose it on other people. The great um, secular republic of the United States was founded um, in secularism. The founding fathers were, were very clear about this because they were mindful of the religious tyrannies that they'd fled from. Well, that's, Bishop, that's an interesting point because religion is much stronger in the United States, perhaps precisely because of this. And well, it's yes. because you're, you are the establishment that, that the Church of England is relatively weak nowadays. Nothing to do with militant secularism. Well, no. I mean, I think where the United States is concerned, we must distinguish between the separation of church from state and the Judeo-Christian tradition from the state. I mean, the Constitution, the amendments, uh, the whole uh, tenor uh, of public life in the U.S. is governed by the Judeo-Christian tradition. So I think those are two quite different you, things. Do you think Saeed Avasi is broadly right, do you? Well, yes, uh, of course she is, because, I mean, if you start with Magna Carta, for instance, the Bill of Rights, the abolition of the slave trade and slavery, uh, industrial legislation, the reform of the nursing profession, uh, these are all explicitly Christian-inspired movements which have given us the kind of life that we have today. Christian-inspired movements no, I don't, which are I fundamental don't to our politics. I, I really don't think that these, these good things that the bishop has mentioned are Christian-inspired. Um, <laughs> Will we, we are, before um, the abolition Carter? of the slave trade? I mean, um, that was oh, Of course. I mean, in, in historical times, everybody was religious, and so that, there's no question no, about it. That's not the point. The have, point is that no, it explicitly okay. invokes God. I mean, the Magna Carta is based on a Christian view of God and of the human Ruth person. Well, I think militant everything is increasing, and that's what we're seeing here. And when I started writing about religion for the Times in about 1989, um, everyone predicted that it was a dying subject, and by past the millennium there would be no religion in the papers at all, and now here we are on Newsnight. I mean, it's almost incredible, really. And I think everything has become more militant, and as a result, what we're seeing is the consequence of this um, growing battle between the atheism, the, the new atheists, as, as we call people like Richard Dawkins, and the religious leaders of today, and everyone is fighting their corner with more and more aggression. Um, what, one of the interesting things um, about Baroness Worsi is that she talked about her daughter in Rome and how she sent her daughter to a convent, a Roman Catholic convent. And in a way, um, people such as Richard Dawkins have provided a service to the faith and that they've brought them together in battle against 
the atheists. So they but, have um, created new interfaith harmony. Why, why did it take Baroness Varsi to raise this? I mean, what, what, what's wrong with the church that people like you are not doing? Well, I've been raising this now, as you well know, Gavin, for several years. I'm very glad that Baroness Varsi has used uh, many of the words and the sentences that I've written about in uh, national newspapers and indeed on your program. Uh, so I very much welcome what she is saying. But what, what is it? I mean, if you feel that you're in some way sidelined or marginalized, uh, Queen is defender of the faith, bishops uh, in the House of Lords, thousands of church schools that people happily attend to. What is marginal about that? What is it that you would like that you're not getting? Well, it is the, the uh, paraphernalia, as it were, the, of establishment does not actually mean that Christian faith is at the center. I am not asking for a privileged place for the church. I think what is most important is the Judeo-Christian tradition in legislation today, for instance, when it is about the human person but, or, but indeed, policy, or indeed policy making. Sorry to interrupt, but recently didn't a judge say that our law was nothing to do with Judeo-Christian Well, tradition? several judges have said that they sit as judges in a secular society. I thought they were judges of the crown. Well, let, let, well if, bringing if, that, if, if the mean, bishop if, does yeah, want to have... Uh, privileges, isn't asking for privileges for the Church of England, let all the bishops resign from the House of Lords. Well, that's what, up to them. I mean, that's not my that's point. Not I mean, my, my point is that the Judeo-Christian tradition of the Bible is extremely important for this nation today yeah, in the business of legislation and policy Professor making. Dawkins, I mean, is, it is true, is it not, with things like abortion and stem cell research and so exactly. on, that the Judeo- Christian tradition does inform a lot of that debate. Absolutely, and that's one of the, one of the problems. Um, this, the survey that my foundation has just brought out this very day, as a, as a matter of fact, um, questioned people who ticked the Christian box in the census. We, we did it the very week after the, the, after the census took place. People who had recorded themselves as, as Christian, and we found out not only that the number of Christians has greatly dropped since the previous census, but that those who still counted themselves as Christians no longer believe in lots and lots of things that the Christian religion is supposed to. And in particular, things like abortion, things like um, assisted euthanasia for the, for the terminally ill, they very, very strongly support in, the, in opposition to their professed Christianity. Uh, taking the Christian box, in other words, many people are nominally Christian, but that doesn't really mean very much. I think that that's always been the case of, um, in Britain, that um, people have um, Christianity, especially the Church of England, is a very broad church, and people have often taken it, um, core beliefs, but not um, taken on board all of the doctrine of the Bible, fundamentalist view of the Bible. Very few people are fundamentalists, as um, sometimes in the things you've done, um, Dr. Dawkins, it, it does seem as though you think all Christians, people who call themselves Christians, are by virtue of calling themselves that fundamentalist, whereas in fact they're not. Well, and as your own survey pointed out, 6% of the 54% mm. who, didn't believe, uh, who are Christians um, didn't even believe in God. Well, that is exactly the point. Um, because we have found that the people who call themselves Christians actually just mean something like, some of them, even 40%, said, oh, by Christian, I just mean I try to be a good person. But there's nothing wrong well, with that. Well, of course there's nothing wrong with that. Let me finish. Yeah. Like Let me finish. If you accept that those people are to be labelled Christian just because they want to be a good person... Or define themselves then as you Christian. No, no, Let me finish, if you yeah, please. Just just if you accept that uh, people who who call them themselves Christian on such nebulous grounds as that, that's absolutely fine. But what you cannot then do is hijack those people and say, these are Christians, therefore we Christians, we bishops and we, we priests, can therefore count these people as though they had voted for us yeah. in implementing policy. Right. You this, cannot this, have yeah. it both ways. This is not about bishops and priests, but I'm amazed at what your survey shows. 44% of people believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. 50% go to church. These are your survey figures. 62% believe in heaven. Let me I mean, what are you, you know, well, what kind of nominality are you I talking just, about? Just, Professor Dawkins. Yes, I mean, those figures that you quote are not percentage of the population. Those are percentages of the people who said they were Christian. Yes, which is 70% or so. Well, it is not. It's, it's now survey. dropped, to, or at least if our survey is right, to 54%. Right. Well, we, we will see. We will see. Thank you all very much.